Well, I believe you told uh, Sheriff Boutwell that when you'd kill, you'd get this cold feeling. Well, it's like being in an ice box. You get just as cold, uh, no feelings. Uh, you don't have no feelings for the actual human itself. You just as though it's not there. Welcome back, everyone. Matthew here with Cinegold, and today I'm bringing you the top five true crime documentaries on Netflix right now. No further introduction necessary today. Let's get started. 911, where's your emergency? My wife's had an accident. She's still breathing. What kind of accident? Still in the Number five the staircase in december of 2001 novelist michael peterson called emergency services a report that his wife had died after falling down the stairs a medical examiner reported differently though alleging that kathleen peterson appeared to actually have been bludgeoned to death michael would be charged with the murder of his wife and so began his defense trial which would have onlookers asking did he really do it she was alive when i found her but Barely. The staircase stands out from the true crime pack by having its story filmed at multiple different points throughout nearly two decades. The latest iteration of this riveting story was released by Netflix in 2018 as a 13-part series. Look at Henry. He's pleasant, he's non-threatening, and actually a killing machine. Number four, the confession killer. Henry Lee Lucas, the most prolific serial killer in American history, confessed to the murders of hundreds of people during the 1980s. But later, DNA testing would prove that many of the murders he confessed to could not have possibly committed. When there was nobody around but me and Henry, he'd say, well, I didn't really do all them things. He said, I'm just making this up. How many people did he actually kill? Was Henry Lee Lucas the most prolific serial killer or perhaps just the greatest hoaxer in US criminal justice history? As you might expect, the answer is not clear cut and actually leads us to wonder further about the possibility that there were hundreds of murder cases that were prematurely closed. Decide for yourself by checking out this fascinating five part series. I'm not claiming that I am the son of God. I'm simply saying one thing, that I was asleep, now I am awake. Number three, Wild Wild Country. Controversial Indian guru Osho builds a utopian community on a ranch in Oregon where the ire of the local government and residents is immediately raised. Wild Wild Country is a six-part series that chronicles the ensuing conflict in which the stakes for both sides would be dramatically raised. Sheila, a former secretary of the Bhagwan Rajneesh, faces charges of fraud and attempted murder in Oregon. Cults, fanaticism, bioterrorism, wiretapping, and nationwide scandals, there really is a lot to digest in this fantastic series. Loads of twists and turns make this one of the most binge-worthy true crime series on Netflix. Somewhere, somewhere back in here, you go back about 25, 30 yards, and there's a, the Little Patuxa River, and that's where a body was found. Number two, The Keepers. After disappearing in November of 1969, the body of beloved nun and teacher sister Kathy Sesnick was later found next to a garbage dump. To this day, no killer has ever been found. The Keepers investigates the suspected cover-up by priests at the school after it was believed that Kathy had found evidence of sexual abuse. The seven-part docuseries is essential viewing as the clues have been laid out for amateur detectives hoping to uncover the truth. If you've yet to check it out, The Keepers should be near the top of your list of must-see true crime documentaries. Before we get to number one, make sure to subscribe to Cinegold if you love movies and series and want to get more weekly recommendations. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to let me know by hitting the like button below. Do we have a body or anything yet? I don't believe so. We have Stephen Avery in custody though. Number one, making a murderer. In 2003, Stephen Avery is exonerated after serving 18 years in prison for the wrongful conviction of sexual assault and attempted murder. He would again be arrested in 2005, this time charged with the murder of Teresa Halbach. All this would prompt the question, is Stephen Avery indeed a murderer or is he being framed? Making a murderer needs little introduction being far and away the most popular true crime documentary on Netflix. The now two-part docuseries featuring a total of 20 episodes is absolutely a must see. Let me know your favorite true crime docs on Netflix in the comments below. Once again, thank you so much, everybody. I will see you next time.